Well, good morning, Christchurch. Oh, I don't know. They've forgotten who I am. Good morning, Christchurch. Yes, the vicar's back. Stand by your beds. Um, it's lovely to be back and thank for a warm welcome. Uh, more of the sabbatical and how that all went. But um, it's my pleasure to start us off today um, and to, to finish the service, but to hand over to everybody else who will lead us so brilliantly. So let's just um, take a moment just to still ourselves in the presence of God. Remember that we are here in his name for his glory and in his presence. So come, Lord Jesus, come, Holy Spirit, move amongst us today. Amen. Amen. So a big, very warm welcome to everyone if you're new today. Lovely to see you here. Uh, we'd love to chat to you, tell you a little bit more about what happens at Christchurch. There is one notice, and that is, um, apart from the one that just came, which is on back, um, and that is holiday at home is in this week coming, 8th, 9th and 10th, 2.15 to 4.30. If you want to know any more, um, all, all are welcome, particularly for those um, who uh, particularly might be uh, on your own. Um, if you'd like to come along or to help, or it says here to make a cake, then please speak to Alison. You'll know who Alison is because she's the one talking this morning. Um, so holiday at home this week. Please do pray, pray for that as well. And also we've had a, a word or a picture for this morning, which is two empty flans and one is broken. God may be saying, I gave those two flans to fill them with your goodness, with my goodness, you'll say, to sustain you. Some people are leaking out, my goodness, when I want to sustain them. Feed on my gardener and you'll um, grow strong in the ministry I have for you. Come to me empty and I will fill you with the things of my kingdom. So now is a time to, um, to be filled. This flan can contain my goodness. Uh, so it's a very specific picture a flan being filled but uh, the goodness of God okay so we begin by uh, coming before the Lord we know uh, that we, we fall short so on the screen we'll have a confession which we say together we say together almighty God our heavenly father we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Jesus Christ died on the cross that we might be forgiven. The Holy Spirit was sent that we might be made new. Receive that forgiveness and be open to his transformation. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Back hand over to the back. Let's 
Everybody. Now, you have to remember that the summer services are all age services. And if you look around today, you'll notice that we are seriously lacking in children. So, what does that mean for the rest of us? It means we've got to get in touch with our inner childish self. And you have all got to join in as if there were lots of children here this morning, which I, I know you can do, because uh, I still find that very easy to do. And you have to remember, to enter the kingdom of heaven, you have to be like children. So, here we go. It's right from the start you've got to join in. This person helps me when I'm sick. He gives me medicine, which does the trick. He takes my temperature and checks my ears. He looks in my mouth and removes my fears. Who is this person? Doctor. doctor. But we don't go to a doctor for everything that is wrong with us. So we've got a list coming up, and you've got to um, connect the uh, words on the left with the pictures on the right. And you can have just 10 seconds um, to do that yourselves, and then we will go through them together, and we'll get, really get into the mood for the morning.
Well, I, I like your style. I can hear the hubbub going on, and I know you're getting into this. So let's go through it. So if we have problems with our teeth, we go to the dentist. If we have trouble, tr trouble with muscles, we go to the physiotherapist. If we have trouble with our eyes, we go to the... If we have problems with our bones, we go to the... Uh, coughs and colds. And finally, our feet, we go to the chiropodist. But where do we go when we feel weighed down by problems and pressures? Well, if you know that we're in a summer sermon series on the Psalms, you might guess where we're going with this. Which Psalm shall we go to? Psalm 23. Psalm 23 is a prescription for the problems and pressures we face in our life. Now, we can all have anxieties, fears, loneliness, hopelessness, and worries which have the potential to take over our lives. They don't even have to be big to stop us living the full and happy life that God wants us to live. Now, I'd like us to spend a few minutes thinking what is it that stops us trusting in God and living that life he wants us to. It might be money worries, job worries, health worries. You might have fallen out with your best friend. You might be lonely or sad about something. You might be afraid of the dark or even spiders. There are lots of things that stop us being happy and living our best lives. Now, you might like to chat with your neighbor about these things, or just think quietly by yourself. When you've done as much thinking or chatting as you need to, you have a piece of paper on which I'd like you to write what springs to mind for you. And when you've done so, I'd like you to scrunch up that piece of paper into a ball and hang on to it. Don't throw it across the church. Okay, you have to keep it with you. So I'll give you a little while, talk amongst yourselves or just think by yourself, write it down, screw it up. So make sure it's a screwed up piece of paper. We don't want sensible folded up bits, we want it screwed up. So, how are we doing with our screwed up bits? Can I see some? Right, just a tiny bit longer. We've got lots to get through. And I don't believe you, you can't think of something to put on a screwed up piece of paper. Okay, so we're going to hold on to this screwed up, scrunched up piece of paper. Don't forget it's in your hand, and don't forget what you've written on it. We're going to look at how Psalm 23 is the prescription we need to rely on as we navigate life with all its problems and pressures. And maybe, just maybe, at the end of today's service, you might feel that you can actually get yourself into a better place to deal with them. Is this because I'm too close to the... Uh, no. Okay. Uh, Andy's going to come up and read Psalm 23 for us. Uh, 
Thanks, Alison. Good morning, everyone. This is a very well-known psalm. I expect most of you know it off by heart, but I will read it anyway. Psalm 23, a psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely, goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So, Psalm 23. It's part of the armour we need to help steer us through the highs and lows that make up life. It reminds us that God loves and cares for us very much and is there beside us, ready to guide us, strengthen us, restore us, comfort us, and shower us with his goodness and mercy. Psalm 23 is probably the most well-known of all the psalms. It's been a great comfort to generations of people a lot of the time at the most difficult times of their lives. It encourages us to trust God when we feel drained, and it can give us fresh strength, encouragement, and comfort. It is a psalm that we should read slowly, taking time to understand what it tells us about the relationship we can have with God. David wrote this psalm to build up his trust in God, to remind him who God was, and why he could place his trust in him. But it is for us too. We can read it and be reminded that we should place our trust in God and be assured that through Jesus, our good shepherd, God will lead us, restore us, protect us, feed us, and love us. When Jesus came into the world, he said, I am the good shepherd. Every line of Psalm 23 tells us what God wants to do for us as our shepherd. We have a washing line here, and some of you have got verses from Psalm 23 written on it, on some washing. And at the appropriate time, um, I'm hoping you'll bring it up and read it to us and peg it on the line. So we'll start off with verse 1. Who's got verse 1? Aha. Oh, I've got to take this off. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Thank you. So, David uses the Hebrew word Yahweh, meaning I am when he says, the Lord is my shepherd. I am, with no verb after it, indicates God's unchanging nature. He is always the same, dependable and strong. David knew this, and through this psalm, he wants us to know it too. This is the kind of shepherd we need. A sheep without a shepherd is a disaster waiting to happen. This is how we should feel about life without our shepherd a life where we try to remain in control and solve all our problems. We need to think again and put trust in our dependable, strong and loving shepherd, God. God bought us and the price he paid for us was the life of his only son. That's how much he cares for us. We read in John 3:16 that God so loved the world that he gave his only son that we might not perish but have eternal life. Why wouldn't we put our trust in a God who loves and cares for us that much? 
Now, who's got verse 2? Grab the microphone. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. Excellent. You have to check they peg it the right way round. Cool. Excellent, thank you. Now, sheep have very little to defend themselves with. All they can do as defence is be ready to run away. And being ready to run away means they have to be standing up and alert. They are always in a state of anxiety and they cannot rest. David found it hard to rest. On his mind were fears, challenges and problems. We find it hard to rest. We have our fears, challenges and problems. God doesn't promise to take them away. David certainly didn't have all these taken from him, but he knew that God was with him. As we face our fears, challenges and problems, we need to remind ourselves constantly that God is with us. And even better, David adds, he guides me along the right paths. God had a path for David as he has a path for us. It is a path that he led David along, and it's a path he will lead us along if we let him. As we trust that God is there with us, and in fact leading us, before we face these fears, challenges, and problems, we can more readily allow him to make us lie down in green pastures, and we can more easily be led by him beside quiet waters. We can experience that rest in him before we face what life is throwing at us and trying to defeat us with. Now, before we go on to verse 3, we're going to sing, The Lord's My Shepherd, which continually reminds us that we can trust in God.
though I walk the darkest path. And though I walk the darkest path, I will not fear the evil one. For you So who's got verse 3? He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Thank you. David writes this in the present tense. This isn't a one-time only event. This is an offer for us throughout our lives. God might have a path for us that he wants to lead us along, and we might want to be led along it, but sometimes we go astray, and we need to be brought back to it. Isaiah 53, 6 says, We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us turned to our own way. We're tempted to choose another path. Our heart pulls us off in another direction, and we put obedience to one side, thinking we know best. David, we know, had a heart for God. It says in 1 Samuel 1, 14, the Lord has sought a man after his own heart. David was this man, yet David was tempted to wander from the path God had prepared for him. He needed to be brought back to walk again with God, God restored his soul as he wants to restore our soul. We are like the sheep who wander off and need the shepherd to bring us back to the fold. Now, there is a sheep, such a sheep, as a cast sheep, and it can be a sheep whose fleece has become long and heavy or one who's heavily pregnant. And this sheep can fall on its side, then onto its back, a position from which it can't get back up again. If the shepherd didn't arrive within a short time, the sheep would die. That's one of the reasons why a shepherd would always look over his flock, counting them to see if they were all there. If one was missing, it was quite possibly because it had become a cast sheep. In the parable of the 99 sheep, the shepherd may be thinking that the missing sheep is lying on its back somewhere, unable to turn over. That would be his reason for searching for it. He wanted to bring it back into the safety of his flock. Once the sheep is found, the shepherd would roll the sheep over on its side, rub its legs to restore circulation, then lift it to its feet again. We know the parable of the lost sheep. The sheep leaves his 99 sheep to search for the lost sheep. And there's much joy when the sheep is found. Now, this little video that we're going to watch concentrates on the lost sheep, his sadness, his loneliness and anxiety when he's lost, and his joy and contentment at being found by the loving shepherd.
Now, I'd like you to watch it as if you're the lost sheep, reminding yourself of the joy and contentment you've experienced each time you've been rescued by God. Jesus is our good shepherd and wants to bring each of us back to the safety of his fold. He knows each of us, watches over us, protects us, leads us, and loves us. Now, who's got verse 4? Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thank you. With his heart for God and his trust in him, David might not have feared death itself, we might not fear God, uh, sorry, we might not fear death. Because of our faith, we might be able to see death as the glorious moment when we finally found out, find ourselves at home with our Saviour, in whom we have, throughout our lives, placed our trust. However, death can cast a long shadow. The process of dying can be long and hard. It is a time when we can struggle to know where God is, and we can feel alone and deserted. It is a deep valley and one that's difficult to climb out of. Even Jesus, as he was dying, felt cut off from his father's love, saying on the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? His father hadn't left Jesus. He was there, in control, ensuring that his mission to bring all people back to himself was accomplished through Jesus taking upon himself the sins of the world. God doesn't leave us at the point of the deepest valley in our lives. In fact, God doesn't leave us in any of the valleys we find ourselves in. We might be in the valley of ill health, depression, divorce, marriage breakdown, unemployment, caring for or even mourning a loved one. These times can make us feel desperately alone, but we are never completely alone. God is always there by our side. Some of you will know the poem, Footprints in the Sand, which illustrates to us how God carries us when we're going through our most difficult times. He doesn't leave us alone. And Nicola's going to read it for us.
One night I dreamed I was walking along the beach with the Lord. Many scenes from my life flashed across the sky. In each scene I noticed footprints in the sand. Sometimes there were two sets of footprints. Other times there were one set of footprints. This bothered me because I noticed that during the low periods of my life, when I was suffering from anguish, sorrow, or defeat, I could only see one set of footprints. So I said to the Lord, you promised me, Lord, that if I followed you, you would walk with me always. But I have noticed that during the most trying periods of my life, there have only been one set of footprints in the sand. Why, when I needed you most, you have not been there for me? The Lord replied, the times when you have seen only one set of footprints is when I carried you. Thank you. In the psalm, David reminds us that God is there with his rod and his staff to comfort us. The shepherd used his rod to protect his sheep from the advances of wild animals. The staff he used to gather them up from danger and place them back on the path with him in the safety of his love and protection. There is nowhere in any valley we can go where God will not be. We cannot flee from God. In Psalm 139, David asks, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? He goes on to list all the places he could go to flee God, but he knows God is in all those places, even the dark places, and he knows that God's hand will guide him and hold him fast. We don't intentionally flee God at these times, but we can wonder where he is. David wants us to know that God is there with us. He is our safe place where we can soldier on in his strength, not ours, and experience his love when we feel there is none for us and we're all alone. Who's got verse 5? You prepare, <clears throat> you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Thank you. Sometimes in life we feel that we just can't keep on going anymore. We're tired. David understood this. His life was complicated. There was a country to be led, battles to be fought, and family to contend with. He writes, you prepare a table for me. The table makes us think of food and what food does for us. It sustains us. We often come to the table hungry. We eat our food and leave the table feeling satisfied, ready to carry on. God prepares a table for us that will sustain us. He wants us to come to this table when we feel we've not the energy to keep going, when we want to give up because our burdens and troubles are bearing us down. He will sustain us and give us the strength to carry on. All we need to do is come to the table. In David's time, priests, prophets and kings were anointed with oil when they were appointed. In fact, they still are. Doug would have been anointed. And you might remember King Charles um, was anointed behind a screen at his coronation. It sets them apart and was indicative of the purpose that had been given to them by God. God has a purpose for all our lives. The oil God anointed David with reminded David of God, God's purpose for his life and can remind us of the purpose God has for our life, the good work God created each of us to do. 
David's cup overflows. His situation might not suggest this, but David knows that he has joy in the Lord, his shepherd. The joy is for now. He does not have to struggle through the ups and downs of his life and have his joy at the end. My cup overflows, he says. It's for the here and now. We can have that very same joy. We also don't have to manfully struggle through life's valleys and in doing so earn our joy at the end of our life. We can have that joy underpinning our very being as we live our earthly life. We come to our last verse, verse 6. Surely your goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. It's a cast sheep. (laughs) What do I have to do? Rub its legs. Stroke its tummy and turn it upside down. (laughs) There we are, it's all better. Now, if you imagine that the shepherd is at the front leading his sheep, his sheep dogs are behind him, behind them, sweeping up stragglers and rounding up those going astray, gradually moving them back in the direction the shepherd is leading them. The shepherd's at the front, dogs at the back, keeping them close to the shepherd. David tells us in this psalm of God's two sheepdogs, goodness and mercy, who follow us through all our lives and welcome us to his home where we shall dwell forever. Our lives may be troubled. Sin is rife in the world, and the world is not as God created it. But even so, we are promised God's goodness and mercy. Where we should expect justice, God offers us mercy. And even in our worst days, we have the love and goodness of God surrounding us. So there we have our washing line of verses from Psalm 23. And hopefully, we know that we can be the sheep David talks about in it. But if we haven't quite got there yet, we've got one final video clip, which just about sums up everything for us. On Psalm 23. Uh, uh, And being a sheep. Now, to feed them and lead them and help them to sleep, there's a man called a Shep, a Shep, something or other, who who kind of acts like their, their father and mother. He protects them all night and guides them all day. He feeds them green grass and watches them play. And then, when they're gasping with thirst from the heat, he finds sparkling streams with water so sweet. And oh, how they love him and dance round his feet. And when there is danger, because baddies are near, when strange, creepy noises ring out through the air, they gather round close and they don't need to fear. Because the strong, gentle Shepman is always right there. So they pounce and they flounce and they bounce up and down and they don't go out shopping or traipsing around town. No, they bound all around and to make a glad sound. They bleed from a mound or they pound on the ground. Because all that they need the Shep's bound to have found. And thinking of sheep, 
with a good old ship chubby. I sometimes stop wishing that I was that happy. I wish that I too had a sheep ship like that. To to get all I need and lay enemies flat. I think of these things and I cry out in glee. Oh, if I were a sheep, what great things I would see. What great things I could have. What great things I could be. But then I remember that I'm simply just me. At least, that is what I always did say, until something happened one glorious day. My teacher was reading that very same song, and talking of how no harm should alarm, when she just out and said this wonderful thing. The sheep David talks of is simply just him, and just like a shepherd with sheep in his care, so God watches you. He's always right there. I gasped at the thought that this message was true. I'm that sheep. I'm that sheep. I'm that sheep through and through. All those wonderful things that the sheep get and do, I said to myself, are in fact all for you. So now, if you hear someone bounding with glee, instead of a sheep, it's probably me. Because the best ship that there ever could be has given me all that I need to be free and all that I need in work and in play he lavishes on me day after day. So instead of that wishing you'll now hear me say God is my shipman! Hip hip hooray! <laughs> Well, hopefully you've got it now. <laughs> so, we still have our screwed up ball of problems in our hand. The ball might not go away, but Psalm 23 is our prescription for the problems and pressures written on it. It is a short psalm, and if we took time to learn it, maybe as we carry that ball, we might be able to bring to our minds the verse that could help us most. Whether it's the verse telling us of the rest and encouragement available to all of us in those green pastures or beside those quiet waters, or the verse reminding us of that strength God gives us, enabling us to work through our challenges, or the verses that leave us with the knowledge that God is always with us as we plough on through the valleys that inevitably make up our lives. With the words of Psalm 23 learnt and ready at the front of our minds, we're armed and ready to face the ups and downs of life. So why not learn them? In fact, if you learn them this week and you recite them to me next week, there will be a prize. <laughs> and, in fact, and I know some of you will be able to do this, if you recite it to me after the service, there will be a prize, but it will be only for the first five that rush up to me. You shall get your prize. So, so thank you for being in touch with your inner child this morning. And thank you to the readers, and thank you for our um, uh, laundry um, readers as well. Um, I'd like to invite Graham and Naomi to come up and lead us in our intercessions. Good morning. Before we pray, I'd like to read you uh, a poem which was written by George Herbert in 1633. It's in Old English, so I hope you understand it. It's entitled Love. Love bade me welcome. 
yet my soul drew back, guilty of dust and sin. But quickly eyed love, observing me grow slack from my first entrance in, drew nearer to me, sweetly questioning if I lacked anything. A guest, I answered, worthy to be here. Love said, you shall be he. I, the unkind, ungrateful, ah, my dear, I cannot look on thee. Love took my hand and smiling did reply, who made the eyes but I? Truth, Lord, but I've marred them. Let my shame go where it doth deserve. And you know not, says love, who bore the blame? My dear, then I will serve. You must sit down, says love, and taste my meat. So I did sit and eat. Let's pray. Our God and loving Heavenly Father, how we thank you that we can come into your presence. How we thank you for your greatness, your majesty, the creator of the heavens and the earth, our all-powerful God, and yet you love us. You love us so much that you sent the Lord Jesus to die on the cross for our sin. Lord, thank you for your love. Thank you for your presence with us. May we be fed by you. May we live for you, whether it's in front of our loved ones or strangers we meet in the street. May we live so that we can reflect your love. Lord, we commit this world to you this evil place where man hates man. Lord, we think of the situation in Ukraine and pray, O oh Lord, that you will just overrule and bring evil to nothing. Draw us closer to you, Lord, and guide us, we pray, that we will be useful in your service. We ask this for Jesus' sake. Amen. Amen. Dear Lord, we would like to thank you for having provided us with two amazing youth ministers who have helped us learn about your incredible truth and wonder. We hope that you will once again deliver a youth minister who will teach us all about you, Lord. We thank you that we are blessed to know you and we pray that you will bring peace over the hearts and minds of the congregation and that this summer we will know your love and glory. We pray for everyone this summer and that they may have a restful time and they may receive the rewards of their hard work. We are sorry for all that we have done against you and your people and ask that you can forgive us. In Jesus' name, Amen. Please join us as we read the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. sing a couple of songs to end the service today. So Alison was saying that um, we cannot flee from God and 
the Good Shepherd is our beautiful Saviour, and all of our lives we can sing to our sa beautiful Saviour and to our Good Shepherd. So, if you'd like to stand, please stand and we sing together. All my days. You're the way, the truth, the life. 
service. Thank you. Thank you, Alison. Thank you, James and Mary and the whole band. Wonderful. There's so much of that so well known. And just we were singing there about sometimes we don't feel it, sometimes we don't see it. But we have that promise that God's goodness and God's mercy follows us wherever we are. So as I say the word of the blessing, please hear that, that God's goodness and God's mercy follows you as you go from this place. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Amen. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great week. <laughs>